Next, we'll discuss the virology section of microbiology. Viruses are obligate intracellular parasites that can only replicate using the cellular machinery of a host cell. All viruses are made of genetic material encased within a protein coat called a capsid. Some virus capsids may also be surrounded by host lipoprotein membrane with virus-encoded glycoproteins. These are known as enveloped viruses, while others are composed only of genome and capsid, known as naked viruses. The structure of the viral genome can be one of many shapes, double-stranded, single-stranded, segmented, non-segmented, linear, circular, or helical. The capsid acts as a protective shell that holds the viral genome and virus-encoded enzymes. The capsid is composed of proteins that contain receptor sites necessary for initiating infection and also provides the antigenic stimulus for antibody production. It can take on an icosahedral shape, a symmetric polyhedron with 20 identical equilateral triangle faces, or a helical shape. The viral envelope is composed of lipoprotein membrane and acquired from the host plasma membrane during the virus's non-lytic release from the host. Exceptions are the pox virus, which acquires its envelope from the Golgi in the cytoplasm, and herpes virus, which acquires envelope from nuclear membrane. The envelope contains virus-encoded glycoproteins, which give the virus its ability to attach to host cells and initiate infection. The glycoproteins also stimulate antibody production by acting as antigens. Alterations to viral genomes can lead to new strains and processes such as genetic recombination and reassortment. Phenotypic changes that do not change the viral genome include processes such as complementation and phenotypic mixing. Recombination involves the exchange of genetic material between two related viruses during co-infection of a host cell. It involves the exchange of genetic material between homologous genes of two chromosomes. Changes in viral genome that result from genetic reassortment are called genetic shift. Genetic shift alters the antigenic profile of a virus and occurs when two strains of a segmented virus infect the same cell. These two strains can mingle their respective segments and create a new progeny strain containing sequences from both parent strains. This can be seen in the influenza virus and leads to worldwide pandemics. Complementation occurs when one virus rescues a defective mutant strain of virus that is missing a gene for an enzyme or factor necessary for replication. The two viruses co-replicate together with the rescuer of virus supplying the missing factor or protein to the defective virus. The defective virus is now able to replicate and form progeny, but the progeny of this mutant virus will also lack the same gene and won't be able to replicate unless they too are rescued. In this next description of phenotypic mixing, or to be more precise, what is known as phenotypic masking, a single host cell is infected with two related viral strains. The genome of one strain, virus A, is packaged within the capsid of another, virus B, so that the outside capsid is composed of proteins encoded completely by virus B, but the inside of the virus contains genetic material from virus A. Therefore, progeny of this pseudovirion will contain the same genetic material and capsid proteins as that encoded by virus A, but virus B capsid determines infectivity patterns of the pseudovirion. Live vaccines incorporate attenuated or weakened viral strains and are effective against envelope viruses that require cell-mediated immune responses to clear. The responses to a live virus will be Th1 and Th2, thereby stimulating longer-lasting immunity through the development of a humoral, cellular, and memory immunity. The risk with live vaccines is that they can revert to active virulent strains. The live viral vaccines include smallpox, yellow fever, chickenpox, which is VZV, Sabin's polio virus, and MMR. Inactivated vaccines contain killed virus with immunogenic stimulants such as the viral capsid or envelope antigens. The immune response is predominantly Th2, thus generating only a humoral antibody response with no strong cell-mediated response. Therefore, the immunity is short-lived and requires boosters to maintain. However, inactivated vaccines are safer, especially for immunocompromised patients. This can create some classic boards questions, which expect that you know the difference between inactivated and live vaccines, so that you can make the appropriate recommendations regarding preventative vaccine care in immunocompromised patients. 
killed or inactivated viral vaccines include rabies, influenza, the SOC polio, and hepatitis A viral vaccines. All DNA viruses contain double-stranded DNA, except that of parvovirus, which has a negative single-stranded DNA. The DNA viral genomes are all linear, except papilloma, polyoma, and hepatinoviruses. Papilloma and polyoma have circular DNA, and hepatinovirus has a partially circular DNA. The RNA viruses all contain single-stranded DNA, except for the rheoviruses, which include rotavirus and rheovirus. The rheoviruses contain double-stranded DNA. After you become more familiar with the RNA viruses, which we'll discuss soon, perhaps this mnemonic will help you to remember which ones are the positive-stranded RNA viruses. These include retrovirus, togavirus, flavivirus, coronavirus, hepivirus, calicivirus, and picornavirus. Use this mnemonic to help you. I went to a retro toga party where I drank flavored Corona and ate hippie California pickles. The purified nucleic acids of positive single-stranded RNA viruses and most double-stranded DNA viruses are infectious. The exceptions to DNA viruses are pox virus and hepatitis B virus. Naked nucleic acids from negative single-stranded and double-stranded RNA viruses are not infectious on their own. This fact is to remind you that all viruses are haploid and contain only one copy of DNA or RNA. What is the exception? Right, retrovirus, which is double-stranded because it contains two copies of the identical single-stranded RNA molecules. DNA viruses, except pox viruses, enter the nucleus and use the host cell DNA-dependent RNA polymerase to synthesize mRNA from its negative-stranded template. Pox virus has its own DNA-dependent RNA polymerase and therefore doesn't need to replicate in the nucleus using host cell polymerase. Hepatitis B virus is a unique virus because its double-stranded genome contains single-stranded regions scattered throughout. This virus contains a reverse transcriptase, an RNA-dependent DNA polymerase that must synthesize a DNA strand before entering the nucleus. RNA viruses, except influenza and retrovirus, replicate in the cytoplasm. Genomes of positive-stranded RNA viruses function as mRNA and are used as the template for protein synthesis immediately upon virus entry into the host cell. Negative-stranded RNA viruses must first synthesize a positive-sense RNA using its RNA-dependent RNA polymerase before protein synthesis can begin. This RNA-dependent RNA polymerase is contained within the viral capsid. Enveloped viruses are highly susceptible to damage by conditions such as detergents, extreme pH, temperature, and organic solvents. Naked viruses, on the other hand, are usually more stable than enveloped viruses because they come equipped with the ability to withstand these agents. There are seven naked viruses. Three are RNA viruses, the calicivirus, picornavirus, and rheovirus, and four are DNA viruses, parvovirus, adenovirus, papillomavirus, and polyomavirus.